His life began in the year 570 CE, and on this slide basically has some events of his life in this sacred city called Mecca al-Mukarrama, where he lived there for a while, receiving his first revelation, having problems with his community, not accepting his revelation, being given many riches and wealth to give up his preaching of Islam, but he decided that he is not going to do so because he knows that he is doing what God Almighty has revealed to him. And so he, he lived in the city of Mecca until he was ordered by God Almighty to migrate, in the second slide, to the city of Medina al Munawwara, where he was able to start an Islamic state, and thereafter he was able to allow for the Muslims to have somewhere where they can be uh, living in peace and tranquility. When he was able to establish that state, he then returned to Mecca al mukarrama as now a leader in victory. But when he got there, many of those who were still alive, who had persecuted him, were waiting there hoping that they are going to be pardoned. Some of them were fearing the worst. But when he got there, he said to them, today you are free. So there was nothing of revenge or anything of that nature, for this wasn't part of his message. Our Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, God Almighty tells us in the glorious Quran about what was his message. That Muhammad is not the father of any of your men, but is God's apostle and the seal of prophets, of all prophets. Our belief is that God Almighty sent many prophets before our Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, with him being the seal of prophethood. And there were many messages before his message of the Quran, which as Muslims we do believe in and we do believe of their existence. But for us, in following the message of the Quran, we also follow the teachings of our Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Where, when it comes to religion and following God Almighty, there is no input on his behalf. However, when he lived his life as a human being, he probably made mistakes or error or anything of that nature, which sometimes you can't say to many Muslims, but you know, because you are not many Muslims, um, you know, it, it's difficult to say, but what I would like to bring to your attention here is that there were times when he would sit with his companions and he would suggest to them something and they will ask him, O Messenger of God, is this revelation? And if he said, yes, this was revelation, they would say, we hear and obey. If, however, he said, no, I think this is what we should do, or this is my opinion, then they will say, O Messenger of God, would you permit us to suggest so and so? And then, if it made sense to him, we'll say, well, your, your suggestion is better than mine. This is when it comes to worldly life. But when it came to revelation, we have no choice in following what was revealed to him and what he explained of that revelation. So Muhammad, peace be upon him, as much as he has that important part in our hearts, we also believe that he was known in history. And there are many historians, there are many who have spoken about him. And I have only chosen tonight 
uh, Michael Hart's quotes on Muhammad, peace be upon him. There are so many other quotes that we can use and we could have used tonight. But this one brings out the essence because he says, my choice of Muhammad to lead the list of the world's most influential persons may surprise some readers and may be questioned by others. But he was the only man in history who was supremely successful on both the religious and secular levels. And uh, this he did in the 100, a ranking of the most influential persons in history. This doesn't in any way, you know, flatter us to say, well, you know, do you know who you guys are talking about? When I say I'm following Muhammad, do you know who he is? Here, this is who he is. No. It just allows for others to know that this was a human being who existed. And he had to exist on the terms and conditions throughout the ages for this to be said of him today. And there are many incidents. There's very one tiny insignificant incident that I'd like to narrate at this time where it is reported that he, or Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was walking one day and he saw an elderly lady all bundled up, you know, her things, in those days, you just put a cloth on the ground, put everything inside, tie it, and that's it. You're ready to travel. You know, you don't have to go to WestJet and say, do you pay for the first bag here or the second bag, you know. Um, so when he saw that she was, you know, moving, he, he said, well, which direction are you going? And she said, that direction. And uh, he said, well, can I help you? And she said, yes. And uh, this is another narration that you can't narrate to many Muslims because like, oh, so a man can talk to a woman? Ooh, I didn't know that one. You know, well, you guys didn't get that one, right? Um, so he said, uh, you know, I can, I'm going in that direction, I can help. So he decided to take the bundle and generally you put it on your head and they're walking. And uh, he nicely asked her, well, why are you leaving? And she said, I don't want to stay in this place anymore. He said, well, why? He said, there's a bad man who's living in this community. Oh, who is he? He's Muhammad. Why is he a bad man? He is causing families to split, husbands against wives and the opposite, and children against parents, and all of these things. And I can't live with this anymore. I was, our community used to be so nice. But since this man came, so many things are not good in our families. So he began to ask her, well, you know, can, can there be solutions? What can we do? And he spoke to her so nicely throughout the period of time that they were going. And when they got to where they were, or where she was heading or where he could have gone to, he said, she said, well, thank you very much for helping me. Obviously, this wasn't in English, it was in Arabic, right? Um, thank you very much for helping me. Um, you know, can I offer you something? He said, no, you know, you don't have to offer me anything. She said, at least tell me your name. <laughs> you know, after doing so much, at least I can remember your name. He said, my name is Muhammad. <laughs> Muhammad, who's causing all the problems? What triggered her was, here, I'm telling the guy of all the bad things he's doing, and he's cool, and he's calm, and he's not upset. So she figured, you know, elders are much, you know, we love to have elders in our, commun in our company. You know, I remember as a little boy going to the masjid when I was, uh, you know, 13, 14. One day my dad saw me sitting in a group, and he went home and he complained to my mom. And she, when I got home, she's like, well, what were you doing there? I said, well, I, I was with my friends. And all of them were like 60, 50, 70. <laughs> because I used to sit there and the wisdom you will get from them, I wish our young people can understand what they can get from their elders today and have them around them. It would be so much more better. So that's what she understood. 
if this person was that bad and she was telling him and he didn't, uh, you know, uh, say to her anything and he was so cool and calm, she said, you know what, take me back. I don't want to go anywhere. I want to be where you are because if what is said, if what is said is only, you know, and I hear, it means it's not true. If you were doing all of these bad things, you would have reacted. So she said, take me back to where I came from. This is insignificant in, in so many ways. I don't even teach my students this because when they are my students, they have to go into depth. But I'm just bringing it because this, this is the first time we're meeting. And not that I want to sugarcoat anything. I don't have the, uh, you know, I don't want to do that. If I wanted something sweet, I'm going to stop at Tim Hortons as we're going. But, you know, I want for you to, to understand where we're coming from and where this belief begins and who it began with in the sense of where did God Almighty decide that he wanted our Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, to, to be given revelation so that man or mankind can know about Islam. The next slide has a summary of some of the points that we spoke about tonight and we discussed, and no need to go into the details of them, um, because you know time is a factor here tonight, and if, uh, if I had gotten you at a Friday congregation, then you would have been sitting for a little longer. No, I'm just joking. Um, you know, but I, I think what we have done here tonight is to kind of break the ice of where we can move on and how we can now go into smaller pockets. You know, I'm sure many of you here, perhaps from organizations or groups or whatever it is, for us to now maybe understand that we can meet and we can, you know, take it from here and getting a clear picture of what happens. And uh, finally, in conclusion, it is to thank the Interfaith Department of Scarborough Missions um, for doing what they have done here tonight and the continuation of the series. Um, and I decided to conclude with uh, a, a verse from the glorious Quran where God Almighty says, Ya ayuha nas, inna khalaqnakum min dhakari wa untha wa ja'alnakum shu'uba wa qaba'ila li ta'arafu inna akramakum inda Allahi atqaakum. And, uh, you know, this is what I believe we're, we're, we're trying to establish here tonight. You know, because if, I, if we decide to take it upon ourselves to decide who is more pious, we're not going to get to the end of it. And we're always going to feel we're superior to the other. But piety is known only to God Almighty. So my thanks to the organizers, my thanks to you, who have taken the time to come and sit and listen to someone insignificant as I am, but hopefully that we can benefit from what was said tonight and make us better people unto each other. I thank you. Wassalamu alaikum.